Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Pastor Amanda Hartman Westmoreland, and I have the great privilege to be the minister here serving at Millington First United Methodist Church. We are very grateful that you've joined us on this Monday of Holy Week as we continue our walk with Jesus towards the cross of Good Friday and await with anticipation the miracle of resurrection this Easter Sunday. As we come together for worship, uh, we are grateful to welcome Deacon Jimmy Schmall from St. William Catholic Church, our neighbors just down the street. Uh, grateful for the relationship we have with St. William, um, who are active uh, participants um, and uh, helpers in our food pantry here uh, that we host here at First UMC for the entire Millington community. I want to share with you just a little bit about Deacon Jimmy as we look forward to hearing um, the word that God has placed on his heart here today. Uh, Jimmy has been the deacon at St. William Catholic Church for six years now, uh, which he followed his father, who served as the deacon for 33 years at that parish. So as he says, he's in the family business. <laughs> Uh, he's also been a member of the St. William Parish for 50 years. He's married to Lisa, with whom he had four beautiful children, and now enjoy time with six grandchildren, including the newest grandchild who was just born on April 1st of this year. And so we celebrate with you and your family in that expansion of love. Deacon Jimmy likes to read, uh, to attend church, and uh, for you Cardinal fans out there, he's a Cubs fan. So maybe we can have some lively discussion over lunch. As we prepare to worship, will you stand with me and join in our call to worship and then our first hymn? We'll read responsibly. No, no matter how far we wander from you, O oh God, your steadfast love finds us. No matter how unjust the world seems to us, O oh God, your, your steadfast righteousness sustains us. No matter how vulnerable our lives seem to us, God, God your steadfast presence gives us hope. No matter how unloved and uncared for we feel, God, you hear our cries and answer our prayers. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you remain standing as you are able and join as we sing together hymn number 287, O Love Divine, What Hast Thou Done?
of John. Six days before Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. They gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served, while Lazarus was one of those reclining at table with him. Mary took a liter of costly perfumed oil made from genuine aromatic nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and dried them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Then Judas the Iscariot, one of the disciples and the one who would betray him said, why was this oil not sold for 300 days wages and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and held the money bag and used to steal contributions. So Jesus said, leave her alone. Let her keep this for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The large crowd of the Jews found out that he was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests plotted to kill Lazarus too, because many of the Jews were turning away and believing in Jesus because of him. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Pastor Amanda, thank you so much. I am really uh, happy to be here. Uh, Pastor uh, mentioned that uh, we do a lot of uh, help out with the boot camp here. And that is such a wonderful ministry. Thank you so much for carrying that out. And we are blessed to be able to, uh, to help you all with that. Uh, we are at the beginning of Holy Week, during which we will ponder and reflect on the final journey of Jesus. Most of the people Jesus encountered on that final journey were hostile to him. Yet, according to today's gospel, six days before the Feast of Passover, during which Jesus was crucified, he experienced a great kindness. Not only is he the guest at the table of a family that he loves, one member of that family, Mary, went to great expense to render him a very thoughtful service. She anointed his feet with very expensive perfume and dried them with her hair. A little later in the same gospel, Jesus will wash the feet of his disciples. So what's the context here? What's the meaning? Jesus was anointed on two different occasions. First, at the start of his public ministry in Galilee, as recounted in St. Luke chapter 7. And second, towards the end of his life in Bethany, as reported here by St. John. Instead of brooding over the suffering and death waiting for him, Jesus, along with his apostles, enjoyed a party given for his friend Lazarus by his family and friends. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem to be crucified. He probably stopped in Bethany, both because Jerusalem was overcrowded because of the coming Passover, and because he just wanted to be with some friends. The Gospel summarizes two attitudes, Mary's and Judas's. Mary expressed her love for Jesus and her gratitude to God by an extravagant act, action. Before all the apostles, she anointed Jesus' feet with a very costly nard, a very costly perfume worth the wages, worth a year's, a year's wages by a laborer. And then she wiped him with her hair. Her lovely deed shows how much she loved him. Judas, on the other hand, criticized Mary for spending so much on perfume, suggesting that the money could have been used to help the poor. Mary's action was extravagant, her motive justified. Mary shows her love by pouring out costly oil over the one who will pour out his life for us. Jesus responds by accepting her display of love while reminding us of our obligation to the poor. However, Judas's motive in suggesting the good action of helping the poor was selfish. He was just trying to ruin the moment. So what's the message here? We need to express our love and gratitude to Jesus during this Holy Week for what he did for us centuries ago and for what he continues to do for us now. He poured out his blood for us and for our salvation. He anointed us with his Holy Spirit 
and made us the temple of that spirit. We can express our love and gratitude to our Savior Jesus during Holy Week by spending more time in prayer and adoration, and especially by participating in the liturgy, doing acts of penance for our past sins, and by actively engaging in acts of loving and humble service. A few years ago, I had a conversation with a friend of mine about poverty. It was just after my ordination, and I think he was trying to trip me up. I was wanting to start restart our social ministry program in St. William. So I asked him what he thought, and he cited the words in today's gospel. You always have the poor with you as justification for doing nothing to alleviate poverty. His reasoning was that if Jesus said that the poor will always be with us, then why should we try to eliminate poverty? I told him I thought his argument was flawed. The poor are those who are in need. So yes, the poor will always be with us as long as someone is in need. The real question is, how do we respond to the poor? Our first reading, our first reading shows God's response to the poor for those in need. God speaks of the one who will bring forth justice to the nations. With the insight of our Christian faith, we realize that this reading is about Jesus. And as Christians, we also recognize our call to follow Jesus, bringing forth justice, alleviating poverty, and sharing the good news with all. By loving others, we demonstrate our love for God. And loving God entails loving others. As we begin Holy Week with our prayers, fasting, and almsgiving, how will we show our love for the poor? Most of the people who saw Jesus on that final week were hostile to him. But six days before the feast, the feast of the Passover, during which Jesus was to be crucified, he experienced a great kindness. Mary, the sister of Lazarus, gave herself to Jesus in a loving service that corresponds to how Jesus gives himself to his disciples and to all of us. Jesus interprets her generous act as preparing him for his death and burial. At the beginning of the last week of his life, our Lord welcomed this act of kindness from Mary of Bethany. What Mary did for Jesus, we are called to do for each other. On our own life journey, we may meet people who make our journey more difficult. We will also experience people like Mary who support us in our journey. And hopefully, we can be for others what Mary was for Jesus, a kind and generous present in an often, often hostile world. In closing, I'd like to leave you with a prayer attributed to St. Oscar Romero. St. Romero was a great champion for the poor in his native El Salvador, and indeed the world. He was such a vocal champion that he was assassinated for his work while saying Mass in 1980. The prayer is called A Step Along the Way. The kingdom is not only beyond our efforts, it is even beyond our vision. We accomplish in our lifetime only a fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. Nothing we do is complete, which is a way of saying that the kingdom always lies beyond us. No statement says all that could be said. No prayer fully expresses our faith. No confession brings perfection. No pastoral visit brings holiness. No program accomplishes the church's mission. No set of goals and objectives includes everything. This is what we are about. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold a future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything. And there is a sense of liberation in realizing that. This enables us to do something and to do it very well. It may be a complete, but it is a beginning, a step along the way. An opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and do the rest. 
We may never see the end results. But that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders. We are ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future that is not our own. Amen. As we continue Holy Week, let us all be that kindly and generous present to others, just as Mary was to Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather here today as we enter the final week of your life. Help us to walk that journey with you. Help us to have open minds and hearts for those less fortunate than us. Help us to be like you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Demi, for a word of encouragement and challenge. A reminder that while we cannot do everything to fix the problems we see in the world, we are free through the love of Jesus to do something and to have an impact. We're grateful for the ways our congregations have an impact together, especially for those experiencing poverty in our neighborhoods. Friends, before we dismiss for lunch, I want to share with you uh, an announcement about what you'll see on the back of your sheet. There are two more opportunities to join us in worship uh, at the midday hour this Holy Week. Tomorrow, on Tuesday, we will uh, welcome Pastor Charlie Coleman from St. James CME Church uh, to bring a message of uh, power and challenge, just as we have heard today. Um, and then on Wednesday, uh, for those of you who attend church, you'll have to deal with me twice this week. Uh, but I hope that some of our visitors will come back and walk this important journey with Jesus this Holy Week with us together. You're also warmly invited to join us on Monday, Thursday for our presentation of the Living Last Supper, which will begin at 6.30 in Williams Hall. Uh, this dramatical piece um, has our disciples sitting around Jesus, um, embodying that painting of Da Vinci, the Last Supper. And each disciple shares a monologue of how they have experienced uh, ministry and challenge and teaching through the person of Jesus, inviting us into the story of this most holy moment in Jesus's life. Also on Good Friday, our sanctuary will be open for self-guided stations of the cross, and uh, you're invited to join us for that as well. Will you please stand as you are able as we uh, bless our time together and move towards a meal of grace? Friends, as those have, who have received the love of God, may you go forth to be a kind and generous presence in what is often a hostile world, so that for those for whom love is a stranger, will see in you and know in you a kind and gentle friend. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.